Hello YouTube, today we're going to be doing a more in-depth look at Neo Bowser City and how I was able to get my newest record on the track. Before we get started, if you like my content, you already know the drill. It helps a lot and I really appreciate it. And let's move on. As this first clip plays out, I just want to give some background. When I first started learning this track back in June of this year, my goal was to simply complete the track in a reasonable amount of time with piano that wasn't horrible which is my goal anytime I learn a new track and I'm still building up the muscle memory in my piano playing. I think on day one of learning this track, my best run was a 241. So starting off, I didn't think this track would ever be this good, especially since at the time drifting wasn't possible. I was still using my original one headcon setup. Because of this, inward drifting bikes were almost necessary to be successful on some tracks, and even then, there were sections of tracks like the S-curve midway through Neo Bowser City that were basically impossible to do without slowing myself down by hitting the wall. Eventually, I did upgrade to my current headcon footcon setup so I could drift, which is why I returned to beat many of my records, especially Neo Bowser City, which I really wanted to perfect. I brought my record down from a 231 all the way to a 206 over the course of a couple days. And this brings us to the present, where after lots more practice and experimenting with different builds and characters, I felt confident I could easily improve on my records. However, I was still having a lot of difficulty with the S-curve, as you will see very shortly. I believe in this run, I actually fell off on the third lap but I somehow drove so well that I still managed to beat my record by a second, even after falling off. All I had to do was get a good run without falling off and I would be happy with the results. Now I'm going to explain my difficulties with the S-curve. I think a lot of my difficulties stem from simply using inward drift, which is just what I stuck with ever since my previous no drifting setup. But after recording this, I think it could be worth exploring more optimal builds, especially outward drifting vehicles. The problem with the S-curve is that I have no way of braking other than hitting the wall, which is actually very helpful in situations on versus mode, but this is time trials and I'm going for speed. To do this, I'd be very mindful of racing lines as early as the first turn. I found that the most reliable thing to do is take a wide right turn and hug really close to the right wall then start drifting left so I can cut close to the left edge right after that drift, which sets me up really nicely on the left side of the road so I can easily do a sharp right drift for the last turn. It's definitely easier said than done though when you're playing tilt controls with your head and your foot. If done wrong, you will almost definitely fly off the edge of the last turn since this track is very slick. What makes this worse is on the second and third laps, you're going to have a lot more coins to increase your max speed, which is good for getting a faster time, but it really amps up the difficulty of the S-curve. It's not the most difficult thing ever though. With practice, I could successfully complete the turns pretty consistently, but it was far from the most efficient path each time. Again, I think it's worth exploring more optimal builds and getting comfortable with outward drifting vehicles again. Anyway, I eventually did get this run, which I'm pretty happy with.
So there you have it, a 201.275. I'm definitely going to go for a sub 2 minute now that I'm so close to it, but for now, that's all. Thank you for watching.